I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost and I often get the question of if I clear my woods or thin my woods or they have been cleared, maybe I'm not making that choice, but it's been done and I bought the property or something like that, are the native plants just going to come back? And that answer is it depends. So I'm standing here in a highline cut and I wanna analyze this situation, analyze another situation and just look at the range of possibilities that we can have about what happens. This particular situation is a power line cut, but because we have, are eliminating the trees in this area, the plants have, that would naturally come back in have a chance to express themselves and to show up. This site has had moderate success, I would say. Um, and success, kind of like they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, success is in the eye of the beholder here too. So what we have is a lot of broom sedge blue stem, broom sedge, uh, lots of different common names for it, sage grass. It is a sign of low fertility situations. It has a seed that's really fluffy. It blows on the air well. And so it colonizes, it readily colonizes situations like this. And this is not a particularly new power line cut. Um, it's been here for a lot of years, as far as I can remember. So we really have not gained a whole lot of other higher successional, higher, you know, less colonizer species in this area. There are a few of the native legumes that are here. There's some slender Lespedeza, which is a real lookalike to the invasive Ceresia Lespedeza, but this one is actually native and desirable. There are some of the trailing Lespedezas. There are some of the asters. Uh, that's not a legume species, but there's one of the asters blooming here. So there's a little diversity, but it's not like we have you know, a highly intact native grassland can have like in a 20 inch by 20 inch square, can have 40 some species of plants. It's not like we have that kind of diversity. There can be a lot of different things that happen through the course of time that influence the amount of seeds in the seed bank. Most of the species here either have a really hard seed, like the legumes, so they can last in the soil a long, long time. Or like this grass, uh, the broom sedge has a very fluffy seed. And so it did not have to survive in the seed bank. It just blew in and colonized in that way. The land does not have to come back into native plants like this has come back into. Um, it can, you know, invasive plants. Uh, and of course, this is surrounded by forest. So there's not Ceresia lespedeza growing right over there. There's not the Perilla manther beefsteak plant growing right over there. Uh, tall fescue. There's not those plants growing right over there, but they could be in a different situation. Nature is naturally going to put something there. It's just whatever seeds can arrive when the forests are thinned or cleared is what's going to grow. As you think about this, uh, there can be beautiful plant communities come back, but if it's not a beautiful plant community that comes back, by the time you're covered with this broom sedge or an invasive species, you're really quite late to do any seeding. So unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because sometimes there is no seed needed, but it's hard to know that ahead of time. Uh, one indication is you can look for what native plants exist, maybe like on the roadside or somewhere they're getting a little bit more sunlight. And if you have a nice native plant community in those little, little patches where they get enough sunlight, that's a good indication that the rest of that field, the rest of that um, area, is going to have a nice native plant community that comes back to it. But if you don't see that, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you won't get a nice native plant community, but it's kind of a sign that you may not. The time to seed is when the forest is first cleared or thinned. And that's because once this stuff is all growing and established, it's not necessarily bad, but it doesn't leave space for the other things we want to grow. We would like to have a larger diversity of plants growing here, but we can't have that because it, to establish now, because this, this broom sedge in this case, or it could be an invasive plant, is providing so much competition, it takes all the sunlight and the moisture and the nutrients that our little tiny seedling just has a hard time getting started. And so that's not to say it can't ever be successful to overseed, but the bang for your buck greatly diminishes once this vegetation comes back in. So we moved a hop, skip and a jump from that site over there where we were with the high line cut 
So a very similar situation. There's a High Line rod above my head again, and this was kept open by the High Line company. This was, we call it the Smith 40. It was owned by the Smith Lumber Company. This lumber company, they didn't graze it, and so it wasn't overgrazed when a lot of the country around it was. And so these plants have come back from the seed bank or they were struggling plants when the power line was put through. But one way or another, these plants have survived and there's a bunch of diversity here. The native grasses, the native wildflowers, different functional diversity groups, you know, those warm season grasses, cool season grasses, native forbs and legumes. So if you're lucky enough, when you thin or clear a forest, you end up with a beautiful diversity of plants. But you don't know whether you're gonna end up with a great stand of stuff that just comes back from the seed bank or not. And so that best time to seed is unfortunately right then and there when you do the initial clearing, but you do need to make sure you get good seed to soil contact. That's a whole nother topic and I won't dive deep into it, but get yourself a good seed to soil contact. But those other plants are not established and it's the perfect time to do it. Those are some principles to keep in mind. I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost. One of our passions here at Hamilton Native Outpost is native savannas and silva pastures. We think they're a historical part of our land cover and one that's really overlooked today. We've got a lot of experience in establishing them and we just really like to be able to share that with you, with everybody that's watching. So thanks for watching.